Okay, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the uh, Advanced Software Design module. Um, so uh, last couple of sessions, we were discussing about uh, the importance of uh, mainly the software design, different methodologies. And last time we looked at uh, how we you may focus on users or how you may use users into the design. So at that one, we discuss of uh, developing uh, user stories. We call user storyboards where you, before you actually implement, uh, you create a user storyboard for the users as well as management uh, to represent your design. So in today's talk, I'm going to continue with that one and we'll focus on mainly uh, the outsourcing decision. Uh, in the beginning, we discussed there are a couple of options we have. We can develop uh, software within the organization, or you can hire a separate team. Or another option would be you outsource it. So today, my main focus is that one. And after finishing the initial part, then I will also discuss about <clears throat> object orientation in Python because I, since we have already developed now uh the class diagrams and object oriented analysis i want you to get familiar with the object orientation in python and then the plan is you are going to uh, implement it in python the uh, the class diagram so that's the plan so let me continue where we have stopped last time so in last time we discussed different layouts the good practices when you are designing uh software and also we discussed uh, uh, within the group work. Okay, uh, sorry about that. Uh, so let's uh, continue our discussion. So in the last work, uh, under the group work, we discuss how you may actually implement and build a user interface design for the selected uh, the project topics. Right, so let's continue our today's discussion. Right, the first part of today's session, I'm going to talk about uh, outsourcing decision, things that we need to look at uh, when we uh, uh, plan to outsource the development of uh, software. So usually we talk about three phases, uh, your analysis part and evaluation. Uh, and then, and remember in this particular case, uh, we have to evaluate our requirement. And then you need assessment and vendor selection. Uh, assume that you are uh, you know, considering several vendors and uh, the selection process. And then we'll focus on the uh, implementation and the management. So in the phase one, uh, uh, we will uh, look at uh, uh, as an organization, what your real goal and your core competencies. Uh, and remember that uh, sometimes what might happen is as an organization, you might already have some uh, uh, resources within the organization. So you need to look at uh, those aspects in the beginning. So uh, so the initial decision might be the comparing uh, whether you uh, build the system in-house or that you are going to you know, outsource. In case if you are outsourcing, you have to focus on the outsourcing costs. 
And then uh, you also have, have to uh, assess the criticality of function and activities, which is the features of your information system. And then uh, another point that you need to uh, focus on is long-term costs. Remember that most of the time you might think, uh, you know, uh, that only the development cost. Um, uh, but act what actually matter is uh, what we call the total um, costs, which includes the maintenance as well. Because once you, uh, you know, develop an information system, there could be bugs that you need to fix. And then there might be, uh, you know, um, new requirements comes in, right? So we have to consider the long-term costs, investments, work morale, and also the support. Right. So the let's move on to the phase two, uh, where we focus on the needs assessment and vendor selection. Uh, the first thing that you need to develop is a request for proposal. Ideally, in this particular case, you have to look at for the how you assessment and how you compare the vendors. Now, uh, when the assessment is a crucial point in this particular case, because if you decide to go for outsourcing decision, then you have to uh, decide uh, how you actually, uh, you know, compare various different vendors. It's totally uh, depend on what assessment criteria you make, right? So when you uh, evaluate these proposals, uh, some of the things that you may have to focus on the technology that they use because different vendors uh, might offer you various different technology and it should be matched with organization needs. Uh, financial stability, uh, for example, once you give in uh, the work, whether they can uh, you know, uh, deliver what is promised. So that is one of the, uh, the problem areas and financial stability will be a measure of uh, how successful a particular organization is. And then track record, for example, let's say I told you uh, the other day as well. For example, let's say we want to, uh, you know, uh, build a student management uh, system for the university. So in that particular case, one idea, as I told you earlier, is you can think of building uh, within the university itself. We, we will have uh, IT staff. Then the problem is um, the weather our IT staff is competent enough, that's one. The other one is whether they have enough time and also the resources to uh, invest in that, developing the system and maintenance. So uh, when you don't have uh, you know, those, so you look for uh, outsourcing this because outsourcing, one of the advantages you might get is uh, the same product uh, they might already have implemented in some places. Some, somewhere else as well. So when you're considering an information system, you can look at in your vendors, how successful you are and what places they have implemented. Like in our case, if you're thinking about the student management information system, you can look at, uh, you know, with a particular vendor, uh, how many, um, you know, uh, what are the places that the information system already installed and always you can actually look for it. The last one, and also the very important one, is the customer support. Now, how quickly they can support us when 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 the need arises or when something goes wrong, uh, we uh, need the customer support, uh, especially from the vendor side. So sometimes uh, there might be different proposals. They might actually visit your place, or they might uh, connect online and try to uh, sort it out. And uh, so this needs to be uh, one of the assessment criteria when you are looking for that. And then, uh, especially when it comes to, uh, you know, contract and also the costing, you have to have a fair negotiation on the contract. And you have to talk about like what uh, kind of services that you need. So you can have to define what service levels that you need. Now, for example, uh, with the uh, you know some of uh, of some of their teams will be based here, for example. So those are like some of the things that we need to you know decide when you are making a contract. And as well as uh, you have to have a way of measuring the performance, like you have an information system. 
So the uh, whether it's a success or failure, for that we need some measurements. So we need to have some performance measurement criteria. For example, uh, you know how many students that can be served for a given time, right? So that might be one of the things. And how easy or quickly they can generate a transcript, right? So how many seconds or how many minutes they will the software system will take to generate a uh, you know transcript that could be uh, you know one example for performance measurement uh, criteria third phase is implementation so once you actually uh, you know finalize everything that you uh, you assess the suitability of the vendor and as well as you uh, you know finalize your contract then you have to focus on the implementation part of the project or the system. So you need to define tasks and you have to establish time frame. For example, let's say uh, you know how uh, many months or weeks uh, they need to implement the student management part. Because there could be various components, like there could be examination part of it, there could be like uh, lecturer information, uh, you know, uh, handling. Uh, as well as sometimes if you think about incorporating other operations like human resource management, like recruitments of lecturers and so on. At the same time, if you are going to have financial component in the system. So you have to define all these tasks and you have to have time frame. And then uh, you need to monitor. Uh, so this could be in two parts. So you have to monitor during the de uh, development so that is one of the things because your input is needed. I told you then you will act as a user of the system and then they act as a developer. So as I told you early in the beginning, your environment is very, very important during the development. Uh, you know, this is uh, one of the success uh, measurement uh, for how successful the development is. And not only the development, uh, you know, time, then you can also uh, focus on the after implementation as well. Because I told you um, there might be problems, there might be new re uh, requirements, there, there might be performance issues. So that needs to be monitored. And you have to evaluate uh, whatever the criteria that you have uh, decided in the previous phase, whether they are meeting this. And most of the time, the project uh, failed because of lack of communication. So therefore, uh, during the implementation, the prompt communication is very, very important if something goes wrong. And if you feel that some of the features are not implemented the way you want, so that could be, you know, communicate to them as soon as possible. And you have to, uh, you know, resolve the issues as a, as a, uh, with the collaboration of uh, the vendor. Right. So you need to consider various different factors uh, when outsourcing. So those are like, uh, you know, what will happen during the implementation. So key takeaways from this, um, as I discussed earlier, whether you are going to make uh, outsource your development of your system, you need some kind of a structured approach. And what we have just discussed is the three phases. So thoroughly, you have to assess the needs, you have to compare cost, and then you have to evaluate their capabilities. And you have to ensure the clear communication, performance monitoring, and fair contract for successful outsourcing relationships. Right, so there are some examples if you look back, and these are like some of the examples that uh, we have uh, uh, looked at from the book's perspective. So Gateways uh, Accessories Tool, uh, that's a website as an example. Uh, so they have decided to outsource uh, to uh, e-commerce and uh, they focus on the core competencies. So the issues that might uh, you know, arise during the outsource, there could be uh, legal issues. Sometimes they might not deliver what is promised. Uh, and then you are trying to negotiate and if the negotiations are not successful, sometimes you have to go for, uh, you know, legal actions. So one of the issues might be the legal issues, regulatory issues, security issues, staffing issues. Uh, remember that, uh, you know, the development 
uh, is, as I told you earlier, once they have developed, uh, you know, you need a dedicated staff members when when uh, when things arise. So staffing is again uh, very very important. And then, uh, if you look at only the system perspective and system itself, whether the system is usable. Sometimes what might happen is uh, you will get a system and then maybe uh, your users uh, might not like it. Um, so the usability is one of the primary criteria when we outsource. So these are like some kind of issues once you get a system and when you are uh, going to use, sometimes you know, the usability problem occurs. Functionality problem occurs. Reliability problem occurs. Uh, reliability in the sense that for example, if you're not sure about uh, the outcome of the system, so there might be a problem, right? For example, I told you earlier, in a student management system, one of the functionalities we might expect is uh, to generate a transcript. So what if, uh, if uh, the generate transcript is uh, not successful all the time and there are some breakdowns, so then you have a problem because uh, you know, uh, generating transcript involves various things like uh, you have resources coming in various different places and you have to put into one single place. So when you want to like, uh, you know, generate in transcript, it might involve various different tasks. And then, for example, if the system cannot handle, uh, you know, complexity of this, so then reliability is uh, an issue. System integration uh, and meaningful matrices, like for example, I told you about how do you measure the success. So there are like, uh, it's not easy uh, to come up with uh, criteria when you're evaluating. And then the costs. Uh, usually, if you know, in the computing industry, in the software industry, uh, if you decided to outsource uh, development of information system, the cost is too much sometimes. Right. So those are the issues that we need to, you know, handle. Right. So um, now the costing is uh, sometimes it matters. Like, uh, uh, so we have to have uh, an idea about like how much does it cost to develop a system. So in this particular case, these figures I have taken from the book. Uh, for example, depend on uh, developing um, the website and and these are US dollars uh, depend on the size of the website. So you have to, uh, the cost will be huge. So you can see uh, according to the book's perspective. So for a two years period of time, developing a small scale website. Uh, so this could be, you know, you have to define like how many pages, for example, you have and what content you are going to have, whether you are going to have a database and so on. So this also included, uh, you can see just the numbers. Uh, uh, so the cost is about 500,000. And I think I, uh, uh, you know, mentioned this early as well. In Sri Lankan context as well, uh, for example, development of chatbot, I think I mentioned. One of the companies that I have discussed a uh, few weeks back, and they told me like they it cost around uh, about 3 million rupees, uh, Sri Lankan rupees, uh, to develop a chatbot. So this is, so cost is huge, right, in case as an organization, if you outsource this. So we have to have some some idea on like uh, the costing, so it, it really matters. Uh, another ideas, uh, for example, uh, getting the cost of uh, uh, internet service providers. <coughs> uh, so you might already look at this costing information. Maybe we can uh, do it at a small exercise where you know, you work on costing aspect. And I know that uh, when you're doing some uh, project uh, evaluations, sometimes the, the capstone project, you have to provide a budget as well. So that you need to estimate the, the cost element. So it's very, very 
import. So you can see uh, when you are implementing uh, a website, for example, you have to spend money on the server space storage. And then this might be different from one company to another company that we have to decide like which company you are going to select, right? And there are like uh, very professional ones where the cost is very, very high. I think uh, the reliability is there, right? And whereas there are some of the, uh, you know, places they offered, uh, for example, the service uh, for a very minimal, uh, you know, price. So you have to decide which one you are going to use. So that's only for storage. But then if you think about the design aspect, so you have to, you know, pay it separately. Right. So design cost again varies. These are just some numbers. Again, I'm taking from the book. So uh, in US context, uh, they might say, okay, 10 page site will be cost around $2,000. So 25 pages, $10,000. And then um, high end site for medium size systems, they might say, you know, uh, $50,000. So this might be different in our Sri Lankan context, but these are just the numbers. So if you look at uh, Sri Lankan context, again, I have searched these, uh, you know, numbers. The numbers might be slightly different, but, you know, you can get some idea. Like, for example, if you, um, you know, ask somebody to, uh, you know, develop a website with 10 pages, they, it might cost you around 50000 to 100000 It might be more, but just, 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 you know, you can get an idea about uh, costing. And depend on the number of pages, then it will increase us, right? Uh, but if you go for uh, developing, you know, a website for a medium-sized company, so it might cost you around like 500,000 to uh, 1 million. And it can go more as well, depend on the content and technologies that uh, you need, right? So, as I told you, these are just a set of numbers, but it may vary. So you can see that uh, uh, how much it will cost will be depend on uh, designers' ex expertise. And especially if you're getting uh, help uh, or service from, you know, experienced person, it's it will be cost more. And, and one is designers' expertise, the next one is a project complexity and also the additional features, right? So those are the things uh, that we need to, uh, you know, consider when we think of, uh, you know, outsourcing decision. Right. Uh, and then uh, what needs is not only that, you have to... Uh, you know, use of expertise as well. Because like, let's say you develop a system, but let's say you are going to have the system in your place, then you have to spend on computers, hardware, and other, uh, you know, networking and so on. So that means you have to spend, uh, you know, some of the money in your own uh, in inside the organization. And not only that, you need the labor as well. For example, let's say, uh, you you want somebody to uh, you know handle uh, your uh, website so that you have to pay for it for example let's say you design a system from somebody and then if you need to maintain it and let's say uh, we ask uh, the same outsource vendor to develop that then you know it's again a cost a lot right even handling web pages and also maybe like updating a web page might be cost, uh, you know. So they might cost you per an hour. I mean, depend on how many hours that they need to spend on this. Uh, and if you're going to do this in a Sri Lankan context, these are like some of these, uh, you know, numbers. You can search the recent one. Uh, for example, in, in my case, when I did the search entry-level web developer, cost will be around like 30000 to 50000 per month. Medium-level web developer with uh, around like one to, uh, you know, two years time, 
to his experience, then it costs like 50,000 to 100,000. But if you think about the senior web developer, it might cost you around like 100 to 200, uh, you know, 200,000. And even the web designers, uh, you know, might be cost around 40,000 to 80,000. So again, these are just numbers for your reference, but actual numbers you can look at. For example, if you visit, uh, uh, you know, job sites, uh, so no, they will list you uh, the salary uh, based on uh, the expertise. So you can have a look at, you can get an idea like what skills you need to have if you want to increase uh, your financial capability. Uh, so what needs to get from this is, uh, again, the costing uh, will depend on the experience, the skills, as well as the in industry demand. For example, what has happened over the years is uh, the amount of, uh, you know, uh, cost is actually reduced because there are too many developers, for example. So when you have too many developers, again, uh, then there's no demand for the developers and then the prices may go down. So you can see uh, the industry demand is also a matter uh, when it comes to costing. Right. Uh, so if you compare the outsourcing uh, with, uh, you know, in-house, so you have to estimate cost based on your requirement as well as the functionality and you have to make a report uh, exactly what you need, the requirements, right? So you have to exactly uh, uh, tell if, if you're sending for multiple uh, different companies, what exactly you need, because based on that, actually they are going to provide you the cost, right? Then usually you have internal staff, internal team uh, like IT uh, actually works on this one. Uh, especially based on their prices, you have to evaluate their proportions. Right. Uh, then, you know, the question is like, um, whether you need to outsource, right? Uh, so sometimes when you make a decision that you are going to develop an information system, uh, you have several things need to be considered because we are, whether you are going into e-business model, because let's say organization traditional one use uh, you know paper based uh, you know work and i told you going into uh, electronic is uh, you know you need uh, to spend cost and you need expertise as well so that might be one of the decisions that managers has to make whether you are moving to e business model right and outsourcing is an individual design, but you have to think in corporate, uh, especially in an organization. So whether you really need to go for outsourcing. So always uh, when you make a decision, whether you are going to go for outsourcing or not, actually based on uh, multiple factors. And, and sometimes you have advantages as well. Right, always in going for outsourcing decision, you have to, uh, um, you have uh, its own advantages. Now, for example, uh, since I have told you there could be competition, if you have multiple vendors competing for the same, you can get it sometimes, uh, you know, with a minimal cost. So sometimes, what you might notice is it will be more often very cost effective rather than you develop in-house because developing in-house might create a lot of issues as well. And expertise, because if, if the vendors, the companies that actually bidding uh, for your proposal, they might have the exp expertise in the same field. So compared to developing in-house where you are, if you are new to this, right? That might create a lot of problems, and then that those things that can easily be solved if you uh, think about the expertise coming from uh, with the outsourcing. And observances and outsources handle hardware software upgrades, so sometimes you don't have to really worry about this because software 
will expire. Things will change. And if you do in-house, you have to take care of everything. So the nowadays, um, when they propose systems, sometimes even the hardware comes as a package. So it's not only software that actually you are going to get it. And sometimes you uh, get hardware as well. And when you need the replacement, like let's say after three years, usually that's the typical time that we expected to work our typical computer resources. So they can actually, you know, uh, you know, update, upgrade. And then security aspects as well, because especially uh, as an organization, our security policies are not very strong, right? Especially in uh, disasters, things might change. So as companies, for example, they have uh, policies on how often they make him back up, right? So when things go wrong, and if you have an outsourcing party, sometimes it will be much better than you have in one. So they can focus on uh, the disaster recovery, backup, virus protection, even the encryption, right? And not only that, uh, when you get it from outside, you get it as a complete solution. Even the cost in the design, maintenance, everything will come as a complete package. So we say it's a complete solution. So you don't have to really worry about anything at all. So you have to focus on the functionality at the real use of the information system. And scalability, because you know that system grows. For example, uh, you might uh, start something small and then, you know, when you have a large number of customers, you need to, you know, scale your computer system or the information system. So that can be easily done if you hired uh, somebody else, right? So because they are expert and then especially when they design, they design for various different levels. So you, we, without any problem, you can scale the system. So these are some of the uh, advantages of outsourcing. But although we talk about only the advantages, right? there can be disadvantages as well, right? So I have listed uh, some of them. Um, and as you can see, especially in the costing, sometimes there could be hidden cost. So sometimes when you uh, make the initial discussion with the companies, so some of these costs are not, uh, you know, uh, visible, right? So, so when we, uh, you know, agreed into some, uh, you know, um, limitations like data transfers and dispatches, and if you don't uh, plan well in the beginning, so you have to pay additional fees, which might be problematic. So therefore, evaluating proposals in the very beginning is very, very important. And if you are new, there might be problems. Right. Um, and the other one is when the system is in place, because they have the their own way of handling this, which we may call their roles. So sometimes we have to adhere to their roles, not our roles. Right. Uh, for example, uh, we might have procedures, way of doing things. But let's say if the software is not, uh, you know, handling the same way and they are giving their own way, maybe we have to adapt. So it's always compromising in the both, both ends. But I think uh, sometimes it might give you advantages as well because uh, as uh, vendors, sometimes they might know better than how to handle things, right? So, but you have to be very careful sometimes. Then timeliness, especially delays in modification. So for example, you request a new feature, and then you have to wait until they deliver. So delays may cause problems internally, right? And the other one is, especially when you work with outside companies, companies might, you know, uh, you know, merge with others or acquire by some others, which again might be problematic. For example, I remember uh, 
you know, in case of MySQL, the database management system, originally it was free and open source and it is acquired by the Oracle. So, so the, all the projects built on top of MySQL had an issue with this acquired by Oracle because Oracle is a, a commercial entity. Uh, and then they have their own flavor uh, because of this one. So things like that could happen, especially when you are, you know, depending on the others. So just to summarize uh, outsourcing in, in, in house uh, decision, and I told you like you have both advantages and disadvantages. And then always you have to focus on the corporate factors, which means organizational uh, factors. And then you have to look for both the, uh, the positive aspect as well as negative aspect. So depend on company requirement, you have to make a informed decision. Right. So now during, uh, when you want to decide which vendor to select, uh, to develop your information system, you need to ask, uh, you know, uh, their potential, right? So right. these are some of the questions you, you may ask from the companies, right? So, uh, for example, if you look at the first one, it talks about, about the costing and then what they offer. For example, uh, when people uh, make a cost for their products, they might tell you about the initial product. So there yeah. might be a base price. And then based on the number of students, they might be have another custom price. So for example, a student management system that I have discussed, one the might say, uh, one vendor might say that, okay, you have to initially pay this much. And then after that, for every student, you have to pay this much. So they, they, are, they have different cost strategies, right? So you have to request um, whether they can provide everything that we have requested. Remember, we will have a list of requirements. We will ask set of features needs to be included in our information system. So therefore we need to ask whether they can deliver this. Then you can also question, if you look, focus on the second question, you can focus on their expertise. Uh, how long they have been in the similar business and what website, what software they have developed. Uh, so, and I told you like, there could be like very simple website. There will be a very complex website. You can look at all these different levels. You can also question on how long they have been in the business because it is indicator that they are confident and they are reliable uh, if, they have, uh, if they have been in the business for some time. Also, you can request for their sales, like whether they are very active and whether with the other you know, organization prefer them. And also ask about the references because this is very, very important. For example, when we evaluate to acquire new uh, student management information, we ask like what are the other places that you know uh, select your product so that we can talk to them and we can get their opinion whether what what are the positive aspects of this particular information system? What are the negative aspects? It's very, very important that you look at for the references. Right. And uh, compared to the questions, I told you like support is very, very important once they have implemented the system. So therefore you can ask questions like, uh, how quickly they respond your telephone and email correspondence and what measures they have, uh, you know, they have to secure our data. Because remember, uh, data is one of the prime concerns because data meaning uh, it's like a gold, right? Because they can sell to somebody else. So therefore, if you are saving your data in their servers, you have to be very careful. So for example, in student management systems, when we have a discussion, we don't want, we can, you know, for example, uh, save student information on uh, online servers. But then when it comes to uh, examination results, maybe then you can think of having your own, uh, you know, a server. 
So these are very, very important that, uh, you know, depending on your requirement. Then things like whether they will support 24-7, uh, right? So some, some vendors might say, okay, they will, uh, you know, answer your calls uh, between 8 to 5 which might be problematic. If something happens in the night, you have to wait until the next morning or maybe, you know, you have to wait until the next Monday to get help. So, so going online and supporting 24 by 7 is very, very important. So these questions need to be answered in the very beginning. And then when something goes wrong, what are the services they will, uh, you know, develop? There could be attacks. There could be cyber attacks. So there could be some natural, uh, you know, uh, hazards. So what kind of recovery mechanisms that they will provide yeah. us? And finally, but not, uh, you know, very important one is you can also request how often they upgrade. Right? And, and these are like some of the, the very important ones you can ask. Right, and then um, you can also ask. Uh, and then uh, you can ask about the, the internet connectivity, how fast you can access uh, and what are the speed and capacities uh, and whether they are allowing uh, large file transfers because you know that uh, we have limitations. And then whether the whether we can, for example, email to everyone, which we call email bro broadcasting. So these are some of the ideas that we need to dis decide, right? Um, so final part of. Uh, you know, uh, today's uh, theory, I want to look at uh, three outsourcing models. So as we discussed, we were discussing whether we can develop ourselves, we say in-house, we can go for full outsource or we can go for partial. Okay, partial means sometimes we can outsource only partially, right? I'll come to details. So in-house uh, model usually preferred for very large companies and where, where they have uh, existing a lot of uh, technology infrastructure as well as they have expertise in this technology, right? So this will be the most cost beneficial uh, if you, you know, compare with others, especially if you had a very large organization. Then if you go to a full outsourcing model, so all the, the development activities, if you put into outside, then we can say, uh, you know, you go for full outsource model after considering all the uh, positive aspect of outsourcing and the negative aspect of outsourcing. And if you think that, okay, we'll prefer to go outside outsourcing. So we say it's a, a full outsource model. Okay, partial outsourcing, I told you like sometimes you have to keep your data with you right and maybe you will take some of the things for example you can host your own servers but you can have uh you know team uh, where they are one actually develop the system or program them right or else uh, the other outsourcing idea is you purchase the out server hosting but you uh, in the in-house you develop the system right and then third one is like you can host the service, but you can purchase other third party software packages. So these are like some of the partial outsource models. Right. So those are the, the core ideas that in my today's uh, discussion. So let's uh, move on to the, the group work. 